In this lesson, we'll talk about one more flavor of method that we can define in our class body. So as we know, instance methods receive the object as the first argument, and it's usually given the name self. Class methods receive the class as the first argument, and it's usually given the name CLS. In this lesson, we'll talk about static methods. Static methods are used for utility operations that affect neither the class nor its objects. Thus, these methods, although defined within a class body, receive neither the class nor an object. They are added in a class definition for convenience sake because they are related to the operations of a class. Static methods are going to be prefixed with a static method decorator. And static methods themselves can also be called on either the class or an instance. So they don't receive the class or an instance as an argument, but they can be invoked in any one of those two options. Now, some developers argue static methods are useless because they don't rely on any of the object state or any of the class data. They can technically be replaced by plain functions. Regardless, they exist in the language and they can serve a purpose. They were implemented in Python for a reason. And again, that reason is to provide uh, a convenience operation, a utility method that almost acts like a function within a class body. So let's take a look. So let's begin by defining a weather forecast class. My goal with this class is to feed it a list of temperatures in Fahrenheit and then invoke an instance method on a weather forecast object that will give me that list of temperatures, but in Celsius. So let's begin by defining a dunder init. And here I'm going to take a list of temperatures and I'm going to assign it to a temperatures attribute. So below, let me just show you how this class will be instantiated and what I want to invoke on it. Here I'm going to define WF equals weather forecast. And let's give it a list of temperatures in Fahrenheit, 100, 90, 80, 70, 60. And let's say what I want to do is to be able to call a method on my weather forecast object like in Celsius. And I want this to be a list similar to the one above, but a list of those Fahrenheit temperatures in Celsius. So I know that I'm going to need to have an instance method called in Celsius, right? So here I'm going to define in Celsius. And this is going to take self. It is a regular instance method, right? And here, let's say I want to do some list comprehension. I want to take my temperatures internal attribute, self.temperatures, and I'm obviously going to iterate over it so I can use list comprehension. So what I can do is say for each temperature in temp, I need to take it and I need to convert it to Celsius from Fahrenheit. Now that is actually a multi-step process. There is some subtraction, there is some multiplication, uh, there is perhaps some rounding. It can be a little bit complex to fit within this single line. So maybe I want to define a function here inside the body of weather forecast called convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And let's say I want it to take a single temperature. I'm going to say FAHR to represent my temperature in Fahrenheit. So notice that what I basically want to do here is define a helper function, right? And I can define this outside of weather forecast. However, it is intrinsically related to what I am doing here in weather forecast, right? So it doesn't need access to any of the state. It doesn't need self in order to access temperatures. It just needs a regular argument, right? But we're still defining it within the body of weather forecast. So this is what's an example of a static method. It doesn't rely on the class. It doesn't rely on the instance, but it's just a convenient helper method. It's there to simplify the process for us to kind of encapsulate one small bit of logic or write something that's going to help us perform some calculation or do some task, right? So by itself, if I simply defined it like this, this would be a regular instance method. And I don't want to do that because if it was a regular instance method, I would feed in self. And one really good way that you can figure out whether you need something to be an instance method is take a look at the body here and in the body, see if you're actually using self. And if you're not using self, then you're not actually relying on any of the object's state, right? And in Celsius, we are relying on self that temperatures. So we need to have access to self in order to get access to temperatures. But my goal with this method is to simply give it one temperature in Fahrenheit, have it perform a mathematical calculation and give me that temperature in Celsius. It doesn't need the weather forecast object to do that, right? It's just like a basic function. So because it doesn't need self, it's better off serving as a static method. The way I can designate it as a static method instead of a plain instance method, which is what it is currently, is to add a new decorator above called static method. So we're going to do that at symbol at static method. 
So now let's go ahead and complete the body of this method. This is an old school calculation for converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius. You don't have to worry about it, but it's going to be five ninths times the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. I'm gonna assign this to a variable called calculation. And it's actually going to be a floating point number with a whole bunch of digits after the decimal. So what I wanna do here is use a built-in function in Python called round. Round takes a number as the first argument and then the number of decimals that you want to leave or the number of digits that you wanna leave after the, the uh, decimal point. So let's say I want to round it to two, all right? So this is just some fancy mathematical work and rounding work. You don't have to worry about this. The point is we are not relying on any of the state or any of the classes here. What we're doing is simply feeding in a number of Fahrenheit and getting back another number. So now that we have this convenient method, what we can do is this. We can't simply do convert from Fahrenheit, it's not available here, but it is gonna be available on the instance. Even though it's not an instance method, it is gonna be available on the instance. So I can say self dot convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius for every temp that I'm going to have right here in my temperatures attribute. So now, when I invoke this method below on line 14, you're gonna see we're gonna get this whole list of temperatures. These are all the corresponding values from our original list. 100 in Fahrenheit is equal to 37.78 in Celsius, and 90 is equal to 32.22 in Celsius, etc. And we've used a helper method defined in the body of our weather forecast that basically is related to the functionality defined here, even though it's not actually using any of our internal attributes, i.e. our internal state. By the way, this method, this static method, will also be available as a class or, or like a class method. So here we're using it like an instance method. We can also use it like a class method. So if I do weather forecast and invoke convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius, I can give it a sample value, like, like let's say 100 again, and make sure we print this. And we can see on the right-hand side, we're also gonna get 37.78. So it's going to be available for both, but the reason it's called a static method is because it receives neither the instance, the object, nor the class. That's why it's called the static method. Instance methods receive the instance, class methods receive the class, static methods receive neither. They only receive the arguments that you want to define. They are placed within the body of a class if they are related to the functionality of it and you want to sort of encapsulate it in the place where it belongs, right? Technically speaking, there's nothing stopping you from writing this method outside or having it in another file. But because it's so closely intrinsically related to what Weather Forecast is doing in this case, if this is our whole program, sometimes it makes sense to stick those static methods in your class definition to kind of have all this business logic lumped together in a single place. That's all there is to cover in this lesson, so I will see you in the next one.